Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. A few weeks ago I made a video that looked at the Khafre Pyramid muon scan results, which were obtained in the 1960s. The team of scientists behind the experiment put muon detection plates inside the Belzoni chamber, also known as the Khafre burial chamber, and scanned a cone-shaped area of half-angle 35 degrees from the vertical, something like this. Before the search for hidden chambers, the muon detection equipment had already been tried and tested, as the scientists successfully detected very specific features of the pyramid, clearly mapping its four corners, as well as the shape of the cased area at the top of the pyramid, and that's from detectors placed very low down in the Belzoni chamber. So, the science was sound, even in the 1960s, but sadly the team of scientists found nothing inside their search area, this central section of the pyramid. Therefore, in all likelihood, what we are looking at is likely just a huge pyramid of stacked limestone blocks. There is no indication, no clues and no data to say there is anything significant hiding inside the structure. But that doesn't mean we should stop looking for hidden chambers. John Shea Perring, the man responsible for tearing up the limestone paving of the Belzoni chamber, was convinced there was still more to find. And even though there is a granite sarcophagus inside the chamber, he still thought that this was not the main burial chamber of the pyramid. And he does have good reason to suspect there's more. There are so few inner chambers and passages beneath the Khafre Pyramid. It's far less complex than the neighbouring Great Pyramid and even the smaller Pyramid of Menkore. Yes, this could be by design, but it seems somewhat anomalous to build a pyramid so big but have so few associated chambers. Compared to the other pyramids, it would have been an easier structure to rob. In my last video I made a walkthrough of the Menkore Pyramid, taking the viewers through the passages, and these are all situated below ground in the natural limestone bedrock. Perring had already been into this pyramid and likely noticed how the pyramid's upper chamber was roughly the same size as the Belzoni chamber in the Khafre Pyramid. The layout of the room was also similar, having an entrance in the same place, and there was even a rectangular cutout at the western end of the room, which looks ready to receive a granite sarcophagus, just like we see in Khafre's Pyramid. The reason Perring ripped up the floor in the Khafre Pyramid was because he hoped to find a sloping corridor in the floor, just like we see in the middle of the upper chamber in the smaller neighbouring pyramid. Of course, Perring found nothing, and it appears there is only one way in and one way out of the chamber, but he still thought there was more to find. So where? Well, the muon scans show that it is very likely there is nothing to find within the pyramid masonry, and so any undiscovered chambers must be below ground, and accessed from a location other than the Belzoni chamber. In the 1970s, California-based SRI International, previously known as the Stanford Research Institute, became involved in pyramid exploration and in their 1977 season at Giza, they focused on the Khafre Pyramid, equipped with the knowledge of the Muon scan results from a decade before. So instead of looking up, they looked down and conducted acoustic soundings through the floor of the Bolsoni chamber. And interestingly, they did find something. Well, two things, which seem to have been forgotten over time. At a depth of 21 metres or 69 feet, and then again at 33 metres or 108 feet, the returning echoes indicated there were in fact two large anomalies, as shown on this diagram. The SRI said in their report that to find out what the anomalies were, the bedrock should be drilled and a borescope camera should be inserted into the cavities. They were even given permission to do this work, but sadly no funds were available. Today, nearly 50 years later, these cavities remain a mystery. In 1999, 
One of the scientists, Lambert Dolphin, spoke to Ian Lawton and Chris Ogilvy Herald, authors of Geezer of the Truth, saying, quote, These anomalies under Belzoni's chamber are real and strong. This is all bedrock, and they could be false or cracks, but they are big anomalies. End quote. But if these are hidden chambers, how would people have gotten inside thousands of years ago? Well, for a start, we know from studying other pyramids that corridors leading to burial chambers were often plugged up with blocks of granite, limestone or both. So any ancient corridor that leads to the anomalies may not be seen with geophysical exploration. But interestingly, geophysical tests in the horizontal passageway did in fact reveal another anomaly, just 4 metres or 13 feet below the floor. And the scientists who did the work believed it could be a tunnel, and it too should be drilled and explored. So, the geophysics has already shown decades ago that there could well be a lot more to find beneath the Khafre Pyramid, and there is no evidence that these anomalies have been entered into in antiquity. There were no major excavations noted by Belzoni, Weiss or Perring, the horizontal passageway was somewhat intact, and so the actual burial chamber of King Khafre could still be there, under the pyramid, undisturbed and intact. But we do need to remain cautious, because we know that the limestone bedrock of the Giza Plateau is covered in natural fractures, and there are natural cavities and caves everywhere. For example, the voids beneath the Sphinx are most likely natural, with this patch of bedrock being inside the Nile floodplain for thousands and thousands of years. But yes, the Khafre Pyramid is on higher ground, very different to the position of the Sphinx, but caves and cavities could still have been created naturally, from groundwater flowing through the fractured limestone. And so there is a good chance the two cavities found by SRI International are natural. But we do need to have a look. We can easily clarify the results. And really, what do we have to lose? We'd just be drilling into the bedrock. The pyramid itself would be untouched, so I do find it amazing that nothing has happened since the 1970s. Sadly, on my recent trip to Egypt, the Khafre Pyramid was closed, and the best footage on YouTube from inside comes from Hummingbird UAV, and I've linked their video below. But even with this, we can't really see a great deal. But there is a part of the horizontal passageway that could provide the answers. Interestingly, the central part of this 40 meter long passageway is lined with masonry, the floor, walls and ceiling, for about 11 to 12 meters. The rest of the passageway is just the limestone bedrock. The reason why masonry was added could well be due to the bad quality of the rock, and there is a breach in the masonry on the eastern wall, and this does show some natural defects in the limestone. But the breach in the wall is so small, and we don't know the full extent of this poor quality rock. The breach revealed what looks like a single vein of bad rock running diagonally across the passageway, and so having 11 metres of masonry does feel quite excessive. Of course, in the natural limestone there could have been a much larger zone of weakness, but until we look behind the masonry, we're really just guessing. And it does make me wonder, could masonry have been added to this part of the passage to also cover up another passageway below, one that goes down to the two voids detected? After the masonry was added, the entire passageway could have been plastered over, covering up the clear and obvious masonry section to keep the lower chambers safe from potential grave robbers. In the year 2000, the horizontal passageway underwent microgravimetric and radar scans, and there was evidence a lower descending passageway might be found under the masonry. All the information and data concerning these tests can be found in Gilles Dormian's book regarding the Khafre Pyramid. I've left the link below. Here we can see a diagram of the horizontal passageway created by Keith Hamilton, and he highlights the parts lined with masonry. And this really is the key part of the pyramid. 
This could be the way down to hidden chambers below, and it should be the place where Egyptologists focus their attention. Muon scanning can show us what's above, whilst geophysics allows us to see below. And now we have found something, and we really do need to drill and explore the bedrock to understand the nature of these large voids. Yes, we could find nothing, but the potential findings surely outweigh the minimal damage that would happen to the structure. I do hope scientists revisit this data in the future. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.